here in this video we will see a problem based on wind pressure here is a question it is given that a 20 meter high chimney i'll read the question alongside i'll write the data as well now here it is given that a 20 meter high chimney so the height of the chimney is 20 meter is 2 meter square at base and tapers to 1 meter square at the top so if we look at this question then I'll explain it with the help of a diagram Here this is a case of a tapered chimney Now when I am looking from top then In that case I will be able to see the cross section And here it is given that a 20 meter high chimney is 2 meter square at the base so at this base it is a 2 meter square section and at the top and tapers to 1 meter square at the top so here this tapered end at the top the square becomes 1 meter this side which is previously of 2 meters at the base of the square chimney becomes 1 meter at the top next it is given that the tapered central flue is 1 meter in diameter at the base so that tapered flue means here we have inside this tapered chimney there is a central hole of 1 meter diameter that is the meaning of the flow which is given so here inside this tapered chimney there is a central flue which is 1 meter in diameter and because of this central flue the gases can move out from the chimney now if the total weight of the brick masonry above the base is 300, uh, 1300 kilonewton, so the weight is given, it is 1300 kilonewton. When we convert this into newton, it is 1300 into 10 raised to 3 newton. Then find for what uniform intensity of wind pressure on one face of the chimney the stress distribution across the base just stops to be wholly compressive so here the question is to find for what intensity of wind pressure it means we have to find the value of wind pressure and that wind pressure i'll denote it as p suffix w this wind pressure we have to calculate and it is on one side of this chimney and here the wind pressure I'll assume it to be on the left face that is the wind force will be acting from left towards right so this is the wind pressure acting on one side 
Now we have to find out the value of this wind pressure and some condition is given that on one phase of the chimney the stress distribution across the base just stops to be wholly compressive. Just stops to be wholly compressive means it can be partly tensile. That is the condition. That it stops to be wholly compressive means it can be partly tensile and that I'll explain what is the meaning of this. Now, in this problem, here we have to get the value of the wind pressure. The first thing we can do in the data itself is to get the cross section area for this section and cross section will get it from this top view of the section and this is the front view of the section. Here I'll say that since cross section area we can see from the square we have to subtract this circle the area of the circle because it is a hollow portion left for the flue gases to move outside so area will be 2 into 2 that is area of a square minus pi by 4 into diameter square and this diameter is given as 1 meter so therefore area comes out to be 3.21 meter square now after getting the area with the data available let us try to get the solution to this problem now in solution i'll say that since because of the weight of the chimney direct stress will be induced in the section so therefore direct stress sigma suffix d is equal to the weight of the chimney upon the cross sectional area therefore sigma suffix d is equal to the weight of the chimney it is given 1300 into 10 raised to 3 newton divided by area we have found out in the data 3.21 so therefore here i have the value of direct stress and this comes out to be it is 404.98 into 10 raised to 3 newton per meter square so this is the value of direct stress i'll give it as equation number one next after getting the direct stress i'll go for the condition of bending stress and bending will be induced because of the wind pressure so here first of all since we want to find the wind pressure i'll say that let p suffix w be the wind pressure acting on one phase of the chimney in newton per meter square this is the wind pressure now after writing this wind pressure the next thing is we would be writing the moment of inertia for the section given because it would be required in the problem and here the moment of inertia can be calculated in such a way that it would be about this vertical axis i y y and here i have to get the moment of inertia for this square section minus this hollow circular portion because it would be required in the problem so here 
after writing the about the wind pressure i'll say that also mi for given section it is i is equal to the moment of inertia of a square we are finding about y axis so it will be db cube by 12 minus the moment of inertia of a circle its diameter is 1 so for a circle it is pi by 64 diameter is to 4 so here therefore i is equal to d and b values are same for the square d is 2 and even b is 2 Pi by sixty-four diameter is one, so one raised to power four. Therefore, the value of moment of inertia it comes out to be one point two eight meter raised to four. Next, after getting the value of moment of inertia, then here. since the unknown is wind pressure and the it is a tapered chimney wind pressure is acting on this face so here what i will do this i'll consider it as a triangle right angle triangle here we have another right angle triangle and at the central portion we have a rectangle so i'll assume that first of all whatever is the wind pressure that acts on the rectangle and since for the rectangle its centroid is located at the center so the wind force would be acting exactly at half for the rectangle i'll denote the force here as p1 similarly the wind force will be acting for at this right angle triangle from the base if i consider here its height is 20 meters given so at one third distance from this height that is one third of 20 there will be the wind force acting on these two triangles so here i have denoted as p2 and here the wind force will be p3 so now once i have denoted that there would be the wind force is acting on the rectangle and for the triangle on different locations so here i'll find it that i'll say let p1 is equal to wind force acting on rectangle and this wind force i'll assume it to be in terms of newton then after this p2 be the wind force acting on right angle triangle again this will be in terms of newton and since p2 and p3 are at same height we can find any one of them out of p2 and p3 next i'll say that let p suffix w be the wind pressure which we want to calculate wind pressure and that will be in terms of newton per meter square now after i have written about the wind pressure and wind forces i'll say that since for the rectangle which is here it is in this central portion this rectangle is formed because of the circle so this area is the projected area having its width as 1 meter and height as 20 meter so on this 1 into 20 area the wind pressure is acting so this wind force is p1 so i'll say that therefore p1 is equal to wind pressure into area and here we have the wind pressure as pw area is 1 into 20 so from this i'll get p1 is equal to 20 into pw 
means here I am getting the wind force acting on the central portion in terms of wind pressure keeping this equation 1 next similarly P2 here P2 is acting on the right angle triangle now here I will mark the distances since from the center this is 1 meter and total is 2 meter so here we have 0 0.5 meter and on this side also it is 0 0.5 meter so the area is half into base into height that is half into 0 0.5 into 20 so therefore here also pw into area and this is p suffix w into area is half into base into height is 20 and now if we see here therefore the value comes out to be p2 is equal to it will be 5 times of pw this will be the second equation so now once i have got p1 and p2 p1 is the wind force acting at point 1 p2 is the wind force acting at point 2 they have different heights like p1 is acting at half of h h by 2 distance whereas p2 is acting at h by 3 distance so here i'll take the moment at the base so after getting the forces i'll write down therefore total bending moment at the base of the section is given by that bending moment m is equal to it will be p1 into now p1 is the wind force acting on the rectangle it is acting at h by 2 distance so into capital h by 2 so now here i am writing the total bending moment first i have written for p1 this is p1 into capital h by 2 for p2 it is acting at one third from the base and the total height is 20 so here i have one third of 20 because the centroid of right angle triangle is at one third distance from the base so it is plus p2 into 20 by 3 next i'll put the values of p1 and p2 so therefore m is equal to p1 was 20 into p suffix w into total height that is 20 so 20 by 2 plus p2 5 into p suffix w into 20 by 3 so therefore m will be this value comes out to be 200 p suffix w plus now this value it comes out to be 33.33 p suffix w now after getting this value i'll add them so it is 233.33 p of x w here is the bending moment and its unit is newton into meter next after getting the bending moment i'll say that first of all wherever i have written p1 and p2 values i'll say that refer equation number 1 and 2 because in 1 and 2 we have the values of p1 and p1 and p2 so now after getting the bending moment i'll go for the calculation of section modulus and i'll write down that <laughs> since section modulus for the given section z is equal to i upon y 
i value we have it was 1.28 and y here y is the distance between the y axis from any one of the reference that is if i take x axis and y axis here the reference so exactly at half of this at 1 meter distance this is the y value so here i'll write down therefore y is equal to 1 meter and i that was 1.28 meter is to 4 so putting the values here therefore z will be 1.28 same as the moment of inertia because y is 1 but unit will be meter cube now after getting z previously we have calculated the bending moment i'll say that therefore bending stress induced because of wind pressure that will be bending stress is equal to m by z bending moment upon section modulus so here therefore sigma b is equal to bending moment we had written it was 233.33 p sub x w z is 1.28 so i'll keep this bending stress as it is now in the question they had said that here the stress distribution across the base just stops to be wholly compressive means it is partly tensile and this condition would be called as since for no tension condition at the base direct stress is equal to bending stress that is the condition because if direct stress is greater then it would be compressive stress if bending stress is greater than direct then it will be tensile stress and here since for no tension condition direct and bending stress this is the limiting condition direct stress is equal to bending stress now we had calculated the value of direct stress that was in the first equation direct stress value 404.98 into 10 raised to 3 so i'll say that therefore putting the direct stress is equal to bending stress here i have written 233.33 into p of x w divided by 1.28 so from this the wind pressure will be 404.98 into 10 raised to 3 into 1.28 divided by 233.33 so therefore p of x w my answer will be 2221.64 newton per meter square this is the answer and if we look into the question there we had to find out how much was the wind pressure and that wind pressure we have calculated as 2221.64 newton per meter square which would be acting on one of the face of this tapered chimney and with this we complete the problem.